what's the garden teaching you? Um, and, and how are you kind of a, yeah, a student to the garden um, where, whereby, it, you know, it, it, it's lessons that can be applied um, throughout other areas of life. And, and I know that for myself, this season, um, so much of it is, is just around like patience and, and being kind of okay um, and, and content with where things are at. I always record at the beginning because I find that this open discussion at the beginning is sometimes more yeah. interesting than the podcast itself. <laughs> totally. um, <laughs> off the cuff conversations. A hundred percent. And that's like, that's how I love to actually do a lot of my work. So um, it was interesting here because it was, unbelievably cold in may uh like dipping down to like seven eight nine when normally here we'd be able to put our tomatoes and our zucchinis in and all that stuff and uh, it was super cold and then it changed like almost overnight and then it was hot for like two weeks no rain nothing and now it's like thunderstorms every single day you know yeah so. Oh yeah, I've got a feeling that like whenever this heat wave comes to an end, there's going to be some form of like an epic storm that breaks breaks it through. Like I feel like I don't know what what's happening from like the science side, but there's something about like that much like heat and energy stored up that I feel like at the end of a heat wave, it's always followed by some kind of like big thunder and lightning storm, which For would sure. be amazing. And here, like, uh, it's really interesting because here it's. Um it rains like a third of the amount as it does on the, on the West coast, for example. And mm. so winter, you know, you get sun, more sun and the sky is often more blue. And then in the spring, I would say the temperatures are very similar, but it stays a lot drier. And so you really have to be on top of your watering and all of this stuff um, in a different way. And then the sun is, I find much hotter and it's not as humid. Yeah. So the climate is just, close enough, but also slightly different that I'm really starting to learn, you know, how it works here in terms of like the, in the morning, it'll be, you know, a little bit cloudy, but warm and sunny. And then in the evening, a storm rolls in and it's like yeah. that every day. And it's beautiful. Like I love storms, obviously coming from the West coast, we love storms, mm. but uh, yeah, it's interesting to see how it kind of every day it's like that so you know you can go to the lake you can, you can go out hiking you can do the garden in the morning and you know it's going to get watered in the evening and it's great yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of omit like a whole half an hour of watering so it's good yeah yeah totally totally it's really interesting like this year you know last year was my first year living at this house in Squamish and a lot of that was just like figuring out like you know because we've got the chief right here like there's a 2,400 foot rock face, like literally 400 meters from my door, which creates like this huge natural shade sail in a lot of ways, depending on where the sun is. And then my house as well blocks a good amount of the sun. So the first season was like a lot of figuring out, okay, how does the sun hit my property? Where are going to be like the areas that get a good amount of sun that I really want to maximize? Where are some of the shady areas? And what's been super fun this year, like as we go through, like you're mentioning those cold months where it's like unseasonably cool in May or June. And then when we go through like big heat waves, like right now, like, okay, what are the things that I can be doing in my garden to help kind of like balance out that environment a little bit more? And so I built like two kind of like hot houses that are just like four foot by four foot structures to go over top of my peppers. And that bumps up the temperature in there by like 11, 12 Celsius. Yeah. And so in those cooler stretches where um, we were in May and June, I was able to get my peppers out a lot earlier because they were protected. They weren't getting hit by the rain and that warm air, excuse me, was staying in. And then right now, like I was uh, just yesterday playing around in my backyard and um, I'd seen a couple of things online of other folks going through heat waves and putting kind of like shade sails over their brassicas, like their broccolis, their cauliflowers, their cabbages, et cetera. And I had some old landscape fabric sitting around. So I was like, I'll just like throw that over and like staple it to the fence and see how it does. And it dropped the temperature by like 12 or 13. Um, I think it was Fahrenheit in that instance, but same thing. I was like, Oh wow. Like 
it, it, it was cool because you can very much see that like within just a backyard, you can start creating these super micro climates. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Based on what you're looking to grow. It's really neat. Um, and it's interesting that you say that because I did the same thing. So, you know, I think on the West Coast, I usually put my tomatoes in and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but end of May, June. And uh, typically here, you can kind of put them in end of April, early May. Uh, you might want to, they call it sanglas here. And it's like May 20th is like the day that you kind of do it. Um, but anyways, I, I did the same thing. I built a little greenhouse on our balcony and I had all my seedlings in there. And it was literally just a painter's tarp that I had, like one of those really flimsy, horrible ones. And I just taped it to the window and taped it to the like side of my balcony and like barred it off so our rabbits couldn't get in and yeah. just had my little plants in there and it worked and it's exactly like you said like 10 degrees more yeah. just enough to cut that cold and then the problem was is that I started my seedlings in April and then had this month where the cold snap hit and I was like okay they're cool they're good in this greenhouse but then they started getting too big for the greenhouse and I'm like yeah. Oh my God, I got to get this out. And like, anyway, so I did end up like really just making the leap and like trying to watch all the other gardeners to see like, okay, do you think it's safe to put these out yet or not? And so it was a little bit different and it's only our second year here. So I'm really transitioning. Yep. And uh, to the shade part, what I did this year, which was really fun was I made little teepees for the peas and the beans to yep. go over top of the lettuce and the carrots and the things that like to be oh. cold. So I did the peas on the side of the TP that tend to get less sun as well so that the beans could really have the more warm side and then yeah. everything else in the middle is protected and it's worked really well. But the microclimates, like you said, they're really like, it's like another level. Like you're just taking your gardening one step further. So it's totally it's a play. And, and that's, yeah, that's, that's the thing about it, right? Is that like, gardening it's such an endless journey you know like you could there are people you know because i'm getting really big into growing pepper plants and there are people that like are dedicating their whole lives to like figuring out how to like be growing peppers effectively and growing them really hot this that and the other and so you can like focus in on just one vegetable and go a mile deep yeah. or you could go you know, only an inch deep on, you know, that one vegetable, but a mile wide on all the different vegetables um, and, and layering in those factors around like your environment and how you go about kind of fostering that best um, climate and environment for those plants to thrive. So it's cool because, you know, say this year, last year was kind of figuring out how the garden how the sun hits the property and the best setup for the garden this year i think i've got a pretty good feel for it um and even already i'm like really fascinated by this concept of like okay like what can i be doing from like a microclimate perspective next year to make it even more effective and as you mentioned the the, the teepees there and i've seen those with the peas i can already see that like working super well in my backyard in this one area um, and almost like i'd be really interested to try putting like some broccoli or some of the brassicas inside there and then have the the peas growing along because I think both of those would come out around the same time yeah and then succession crop it with something for the fall that's a really good idea uh for the brassicas I think for sure because they like to to stay cold um in terms of microclimate the things that I've kind of played around with is like definitely making sure that you're preparing the soil well in advance so i do a lot of lasagna composting mm -hmm. on the paths for example and then that's what i change i i haven't decided quite what i'm going to do yet but uh this might be going down a little bit of a rabbit hole but you know interesting all the same <laughs> is like you know you have the option of changing out and rotating your your beds Yep. And what I've done right now is I have strips in the garden. We have quite a big, it's 70 meters square. Um, so we have strips going and I have the paths that we walk on. But instead of just leaving it dirt, what I've done is created these lasagna composting paths. Yeah. And so all year we're walking on it. We're, you know, acting as if we are the animal um, and we have rabbits. And so I keep adding on, uh, we use hemp, um, 
sorry, sometimes it's hard for me to find words in English because I speak in French and English. And then I also have a lot of like confusion in my head with my autoimmune condition sometimes. So it's hard for me to find words. Ah, parfait. I'm joking. Don't go any further. I don't know any further. Donc, okay. Well, we won't do that then. Not in the two languages. Um, but sometimes I forget. I win. Words. I win. One day. <laughs> One day. Um, exactly. Stay, stay open to the idea of French. Um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's good because you're essentially replacing the cow on, on the yeah. farm by, by walking on it. And then we use hemp. Um, Flakes. French word that we don't know. Flakes is not the right word. It's not a flake. Hemp mulch. That's the word I'm looking for. Hemp yeah. mulch for our bunnies, litter boxes, cool. essentially. Yeah. And so it actually retains like 40% of the moisture in it in comparison to other wood, wow. um, which is quite a bit. It's like two to three times the amount of moisture in comparison to other, um, into in comparison to other mulches. And so. Mm. I've been mixing that in with the compost that we create and putting it onto the paths. And so I'm really prepping those paths for next year. And when you look under there, Jordan, like it's such a beautiful, like composty, wormy, yeah. buggy, like oh, good. I smell it and I'm like, Ooh, like this is going to make good veggies. Like totally. <laughs> I, that's like I, I think that's the, I think that's like a huge like misconception is like a lot of people are like oh my gosh compost stinks and it's like no like if you got compost going the right way like it smells like the forest floor <laughs> exactly that's exactly what it smells like my mother-in-law is like ew there's a lot of worms and I'm like like yes we really want that and it smells so, as if you just picked up a giant handful of earth and it smells unbelievable um, totally. And and with that path, do you do you then just leave it there, or do you then use that as like the base of a bed next year to rotate into, or do you like dig it out and put it onto a bed? Yep. So I'm gonna dig right into the path and plant yeah. right in there as if it that's was so cool. growing in the compost essentially. Because that's what I started noticing is the more you make compost, um, the more things grow randomly in it. Like, uh, and it's fun because when you start using the compost that you make a lot of the vegetable seeds actually end up staying in the compost. Yeah. And uh, so I get what we call rogue plants. And yeah. everybody here is what we say, cache, like square. Everything in their garden has to be like straight and in alignment and like in perfect, like very old school grandma, use pesticides. Everything is what we say, tout droit, straight. And uh, last year, one of the guys was like, your garden's too messy. And I was like, no, it's just because I let these rogue plants grow in the middle of wherever they are because they're happy and they're growing naturally and I can benefit from it. So why disrupt, why, why disrupt yeah. nature? You know, like if it's, totally. growing, it's cool. So <clears throat> yeah, we, we are, are a little bit outside the box here, a little bit hippy dippy in Switzerland, but it's, um, love it. Yeah, it's been a beautiful experience to kind of uh, just have a change of soil too and have to bring it back to life a bit. And that's really helps me, well, get my hands dirty. And uh, so we'll segue, I'm going to segue into asking you a few questions here about like your story and stuff like that. And just, um, yeah, yeah, find out more about how you got into it and more of the mental, the mental health side of it, because that's really what I use my garden for. I love gardening and I love the environment and I you know I told you like I used to teach eco nutrition for the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition yeah. and it was actually gardening that got me interested in nutrition in the first place. So mm. if you want to just like share a little bit about how you got into gardening and and why I think that's a good segue to dig deeper into some of these other topics that we've been talking totally. about. Totally. Yeah, absolutely and it's uh yeah it's been a, a journey over the last number of years and probably not your typical or standard path to be you know one getting into gardening and and then two deciding to throw caution to the wind um take out a ton of my personal savings and start building a business in the gardening world um but my like my my gardening journey it began back in 2013 and before even getting into kind of anything or even being exposed to gardening, like the key thing that was happening in my life at that point 
um, was I was in the middle of a breakup. And this breakup, um, which I had initiated, um, left me just like completely riddled with anxiety, completely on edge and antsy and um, in a place of feeling like, oh my God, I've made the wrong decision here. This is not good. Um, and, and there wasn't any like, we're getting back together. Um, and so, and, and, and all the anxiousness was of course, because like, oh shoot, I've made the wrong decision. How do I get her back? Um, and so for like weeks and, and weeks and weeks on end, I was in a place of like literally not sleeping unless I was numbing myself to sleep with alcohol in most instances. Um, and then at work, I had gone from being like super, super high performing, kind of like the golden boy in the company to just like blankly staring at my screen each day when I was showing up for work um, and social situations. I was just like, keep me away from these. Like, I don't want to interact with anyone. I don't want to talk to anyone. I'm just going to like sit and stew in my thoughts here, which also is probably not <laughs> the right thing to be doing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, you know, at some point, Along the way there, I, I was just kind of like, I like, kind of like, I, I, I give up going out to my parents' place, going to just kind of like be, you know, nurtured by mom and dad for the weekend, um, went out there and, and they could, you know, they, they were aware of everything that was going on and they could see and feel kind of how tough of a place I, I was in there. And there was, yeah, one evening, like I went to sleep that evening and I remember just like laying in bed, like literally with like my hand uh, my, my, my phone in my hand um, just waiting and hoping for like some call some message some something from her and just like tossing and turning tossing and turning tossing and turning and then next thing I know it's like okay and now it's getting lighter outside and here comes the sun and there's another night of not sleeping at all sweet and so yeah that next day I went downstairs went to make coffee and my mom she came over and she's you know just Jordan how would you sleep last night and I was like I didn't sleep at all and she just like paused and she was like you know what why don't we head out to the garden for a little bit today <clears throat> and I was like sure like hadn't really gardened at all in my life before then maybe I'd like moved a thing or two around for my parents as like a father's day or a mother's day or a birthday gift kind of thing um, just doing some chores but gardening wasn't something that like I associated myself with so we decided to go out to the garden and she's like you know like let's just build a little flower box here today let's bring some of the soil from over there over this way let's bring some of the river rocks over to kind of serve as a bit of a retaining wall and um and we'll, we'll just leave it at that like super simple we'll just kind of like yeah play around in the dirt for a couple of hours here today and so we got to it started bringing over the river rock setting up the retaining wall then started bringing over the soil like wheelbarrow load by wheelbarrow load and I just like so distinctly and vividly remember like walking back on the path with a wheelbarrow full of soil towards where we're building this kind of flower bed and just feeling like it's was, it was kind of like I I zoned out and just zoned back in and it was like whoa like I, I felt like those clamps on my chest like loosen ever so slightly and I felt like I could like just like take a deep breath for the first time where it wasn't like a partial breath or like a short breath where you kind of like and but it was just like a like a calm and a soothing deep breath and and I knew for whatever reason it was because of like that amount of like kind of like physical mindless activity that we were doing in the garden where um, I was able to take my mind off of things a little bit and just feel for the first time over the course of that whole stretch some level of like a sense of calm and peacefulness and that everything was going to work out all right ultimately in the end and I knew like I knew so definitively at that point in time there's just like whoa like I don't know what that was but like gardening's here to stay gardening is going to be playing a role in my life moving forward yeah, that me, um, honestly that gives me chills but to me that really sounds like that was the call you were waiting for you know like that was the wake-up moment uh or the you know you were waiting for the call from from your ex from from another person but that was really your calling calling to you being like hey you found this is where you feel calm and this is your true nature and so it's um, yeah uh, well, that's that's the way I see it, uh, but, um, you know, like, I think yeah. it's in those moments that 
you can really, you know, obviously working with clients, it's, it's those wake up calls or those moments that like, you know, in your heart of heart, that's where you're supposed to be. And you have to follow that path a little bit uh, forward to see what that's going to turn into. But it's totally, yeah. And it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those moments where like, you just like, you're not quite sure what it is or what it means in that moment, but in that heart of hearts, you can tell like, this is here to stay. Yeah. Um, and there's yeah, been like true. really cool moments, you know, kind of over the course of life that I can go back to and think like, yeah, that was one of those like really, really like visceral moments that I can still remember like to this day so clearly where um, it had a very profound impact on my life and and that particular moment there was like the absolute you know, kind of like genesis or spark of gardening for me which now plays like an absolutely um huge and central role in in my life yeah me too i mean it, uh i i can i can tell you numerous stories where i've had that like funk right to the heart like i am meant to be in this space um you know, finding an avocado plant growing in the compost pile, you know, like fully, I had just tried to grow an avocado plant, you know, how they tell you on Instagram and whatever with the toothpicks and nothing worked. And then yeah. I go back and I had thrown it in the compost because I was like, fuck it. Like this yeah. isn't working in the house. It wasn't human enough. I discovered it was, there was yeah. enough humidity, but uh, in the compost pile, it grew. And then I found it and I was like, you tricky little avocado plant. <laughs> what are you trying to teach me here? You know, and there's just so many lessons like that when you work in the garden that just kind of bring you back down to earth and make you kind of uh, human again, but then connected to the environment around you and starting to see like what doors that can open up for you mentally speaking. Um, totally. So I want to just ask you then, okay, so you created this company mind and soil do you want to just quickly share what the premise is of mind and soil so that the listeners kind of have an idea of the connection between mind and soil yeah yeah so you know over the last several years i like i had been working in enterprise software sales and then i had my own um, sales consulting business to help early stage tech companies and, you know, kind of in like 2019, I knew that I wanted to start shifting more towards the mental health space and world. And so I made a very intentional decision at that point in time to kind of dial back my consulting work to only four days per week so that every Friday I could have as a day to myself to just begin exploring into the mental health world and and what role I wanted to play there. And at the, 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 the one thing that I did that I think was um, somewhat unconventional, but one of the best decisions in that whole um, kind of chapter of figuring this out was that when it came to my Fridays and I was thinking about like, how do I measure success in and around this? The only, and, and, and coming from like, you know, an enterprise, selling world where it's like numbers and metrics and all of this like black and white definitive data. Um, I decided to go the opposite direction where at the end of those Fridays, where it was my mental health day, my measure of success was, do I feel energized? Whatever it was that I was working on today, did that energize me? And, and this was very much like, it's not like a, yeah, that was pretty good. It's like, it was a fuck yes, or is a fuck no. Mm -hmm. And like, it's like, that 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 having that lens allowed me to start moving through that because at the beginning of that journey you know i was like okay i've worked in enterprise software sales it makes sense to probably stay in the technology world but now look at different mental health tech companies and apps etc um but when i had like that real honest sit down with myself at the end of those fridays and like was getting into like the heart of hearts i would I was like, this is going in the right direction, but it's not the fuck yes that I want to feel. And so then I went through a couple, and then I went like into like nature-based therapy to like think a little bit about that and start exploring down that path. And same thing, I was like, this is, this is going in the right direction, but it's still not it. And then as the world kind of started going into lockdown, um, 
in 2020 there and we were going into gardening season, I decided just to start posting on my Instagram account a little so like story that I would call Soil Saturday. And it was just like whatever I was kind of working on in the garden with the hope of like just bringing like a little bit of like fun, a little bit of entertainment to anybody that like was watching those stories. And it was like so crazily like warmly and well received by people where like people are like reaching out to me and they're like, this is amazing. Like I enjoy this so much. Like this absolutely brightened my weekend. And, and this is where like the dots started to connect for me where I was like, okay, like people are like, people are digging the gardening stuff. And for me, gardening is my like mental health activity. It's my meditative practice. It's what puts me into a really good headspace. So then I was like, and, and, and then coming back to like my energizing question, I was like, at the end of these Fridays, when I just spend a day in the garden working away on a project and then putting together a little story to share with people, I feel on fire. Yeah. And so then I looked up, okay, like, is this just a Jordan thing or does gardening have this impact on other people? So I set up a Google search for any time that gardening is mentioned alongside stress, anxiety, PTSD, grief, depression. And sure enough, it was like article after article, story after story, and study after study coming back on just how beneficial gardening is on each of these areas. So then that was kind of like the, the, the light bulb or moment or, or where everything started connecting that the kind of the, the, the mental health activity initiative venture that I wanted to get involved with was helping to introduce as many individuals as possible to gardening, not from the perspective of, I'm gonna help you grow as much food as possible, or I want you to be as sustainable as possible, but rather because I fundamentally believe that this is gonna help you make, because this is gonna help you feel more calm, more peaceful, restored, relaxed, working through any of those areas that we chatted about. Um, and that ultimately served as the foundation of creating Mind and Soil where we're looking to build a community of a million individuals that believe in the mental health benefits of gardening. Yeah, and you know what? Um, it's such a, it, it seems so unconventional, which is such a funny way of thinking about it because it's the most natural thing for us humans to do. And we've probably yeah. been doing it for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, I mean, we could argue hundreds of thousands of years, easily 10,000 years, let's just say. Um, but what I want to ask you this, because we, in the holistic nutrition world, we have a specific way of looking at why it would be good for your mental health, but I would love to know what your thoughts are on why, why being in the garden affects your mental health in such a, in a positive way. Um, yes, yes. We'll leave yeah, that. <laughs> totally, totally. And this, yeah, like, I would say that there, you know, there, there's a lot of research and studies out there that, you know, point to how beneficial gardening is and, and just like fundamentally, like at the cortisol level, the improvements that it has had um, and it being the factor that has helped individuals feel less stressed, less anxious, work through depression, grief, PTSD, et cetera. And, but, but it's, you know, it, it's not as clearly defined exactly why that's happening. And so my, I, I, so yeah, so, so I, I preface with that to then I think share like why or what my personal philosophy would be Absolutely. on why, why gardening is so beneficial. And, and it comes to this concept called attention restoration theory. And this was studied by Kaplan and Kaplan. And it essentially goes through how humans, we use a number of different types of energy. There's four primary ones. And the one that we're generally in is directed attention. So over the course of the week, while we're at work, we're problem solving, we're figuring things out. We're using directed attention to try and figure these things out. And then, you know, for a lot of individuals, they go home and they either have family or relationship and there's directed attention that in a lot of instances is still being used in that how am i building growing cultivating this relationship how am i raising and taking care of my family and so what that means is that these individuals us as as humans are using directed attention directed attention directed attention and it's like a gas tank that 
as we use it and use it and use it, it gets closer and closer and closer to being on empty. When it's on empty, that's when we feel stressed. That's where we feel anxious. That's where we're more irritable. Um, and so what we need to be doing is finding a way to kind of restore that attention. Um, and that happens through attention restoration, which is one of the other forms of, um, of, of kind of like a, of attention. And so in order for an individual to shift from being in directed attention into attention restoration, the first thing is that they have to be away from where it is that they've been utilizing their directed attention. So if that has been like in the office or if that has been like throughout the household uh, where they're raising their family, well then the garden is a form of a vacation from that. And that's why I frequently refer to my garden or individual's gardens as a sanctuary, because it's a place where you're not working, you're not raising family, you're just in your sanctuary. Uh, the second piece is that there needs to be a level of fascination. So when we think about that avocado of yours and you're just like, I was trying so hard to get like <laughs> all the conditions just right. Have you sitting in that little bit of water in the windowsill with some light and you wouldn't grow for me. And then I just like throw you into the garbage and you start thriving. Like, hold on, like what's happening there? <laughs> there's like, yeah. there's a level of fascination there that consumes the mind where you start thinking through like, what was it that was going on here? Oh, okay. It was because in the compost pile, things were breaking down, which created a higher level of humidity, which was a more favorable environment for that avocado to start growing. And the wow. Heat and everything. Yeah, exactly. And so when our brain is fascinated and we're thinking through the different variables between that compost pile and the windowsill for your avocado, we're not thinking about work. We're not thinking about what was stressing us out in that meeting. We're not thinking about what was going on in relationships. We're into like this fantasy fascination world, which once again is moving us out of directed attention. Mm -hmm. And then the, the third element um, of attention restoration is a level of immersion. And I think this is a huge one in today's day and age where like you have to feel really immersed in it. So say something like pottery when you're making pottery, your hands are completely covered in muck. You can't be multitasking and doing two things at once. And in today's day and age, that means you can't be on your phone. If your hands are completely covered with dirt and compost, like you're not sending a text to somebody or email, like responding to an email, you're fully immersed and present in that activity. And so now you're away from work, you're fascinated by what you're working on and you're fully immersed in it. Well, directed attention, that's like sitting on the back burner now, we're in attention restoration. And that's why after 15 minutes, an hour, two hours in the garden, it's like, oh my gosh, I feel restored. And again, my personal philosophy is because attention restoration is at work that whole time. Yeah, a hundred percent. And so it's, it's interesting because I see so many connections between uh, why I wanted to bring you on the podcast essentially was to kind of explain, <clears throat> I'm going to kind of like try and put this down onto a, to paper in a sense is like, explain that you can create a business that is creative uh, and geared toward health in some capacity that doesn't have to be quote unquote mainstream or told that it was this specific way, you know, from the school or the institution that you went to, and this is how you should work. And this is the job that you should go into. And one of the things that I wanted to do by bringing you on was kind of show <clears throat> how you could create a business or create something that is in alignment with you wholeheartedly and, and show that there's other avenues, you know, cause we learn about the connection between the earth and health in our, in our program uh, or programs, I should say. And what I wanted to do was just kind of show almost the interconnection between things that we do learn in our program, like yoga and meditation and how this is a form of, restoration and digging into the soil allows us to reconnect with our true being and our essential uh, way of living essentially. Um, and so when you were talking, I kind of like restoration, you know, there's restorative yoga and um, you're absolutely right in saying that when you're in the garden, I do that all the time. I'm in the garden and I'm like, oh man, I want to take a picture of that. I ah, can't because I, now I leave my phone at home. I actually don't take it to the garden at yeah. all. Uh, but 
I'm like, okay, well, you're tough out of luck because you can't touch your phone or else you're going to ruin it because you're covered in dirt. Um, but there's a lot to say about the, um, almost the co-creation that you have with the garden space. And I think that allows us to also tap into a part of mental health that we've kind of forgotten. And it's like, you can create this sanctuary or in, in yoga, it's called a puja, right? You kind of have a, a little corner that you go to where you express your gratefulness and like what you want out of the day. And then you start your restorative practice or your practice in yoga, right? Uh, and so I now see my garden as that sanctuary. So when you said that, it's like, it's like my puja in yoga as well, where I've now created this space that is a reflection of who I am as a person. And you get to design that and you get to create that with earth. And totally. The universe. And yeah. It, you know, it, it, it's one of the biggest things that I try to communicate to individuals that are on the beginning of their gardening journey mm -hmm. is like, but like, and we do this um, happy hour kind of 10 tips. I wish I knew when I was starting to garden and the very first one that I share with everybody is like place zero expectation on the yield that you're getting from your garden, um, especially at the very beginning, because, you know, you could do everything perfectly, have everything spaced out perfectly, have the right soils, this, that, and the other. But then you have like a crazy heat wave that comes through and knocks a whole ton of things out. Things go to bolt, some things dry out, um, or it could be the opposite where it's completely frigid and freezing cold. And so it's like, you could have planned everything out and try to do it all perfectly, but then mother nature just says, no, 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 we're, we're, we've got a different plan in place for you. And so, you know, the, the, the way that my mom expressed it to me, not in terms of gardening, but just from more of like a, a life perspective, as I was trying to figure out some things in that kind of range of 2018, 2019 and shifting towards the mental health space. Um, but I think it applies to the garden is the saying, you know, we, we were chatting and, I was kind of trying to devise this great plan for where my life was going to go. And she's just said, you know, Jordan, how, like, this is good what you're doing and, and have your plan, but be open to working in partnership with the universe and what it brings to you. Um, and, you know, that was, um, I think that's, yeah, so entirely true with what has started to develop and come to be with mind and soil where this wasn't even like a speck on my radar radar back in 2018 we would have had that conversation and likewise when we think about the garden like if i am too tied and married to the plan that i had at the beginning of the season then i'm going to end up being frustrated and let down and not thrilled with my garden as the season unfolds um, because there's just so many variables that are outside of my control and so it's this really beautiful teacher in trying to strike and find this balance of okay, I'm going to have some form of a plan, but when things don't go according to that plan, um, rather than getting entirely stressed and freaking out, um, I'm going to just kind of like work through that and, and, and adjust accordingly based on what's happening in that present moment. Mm -hmm, exactly. And I think that that's what makes one of my questions was going to be what makes the garden so special, but I think that's exactly what makes the garden so special well yoga as well or coaching through a health practitioner you know but i think the garden is a really great teacher in this is that it asks you the minute that you step in into it to let go of your ego and let go of your judgment and let go of all of the things that make us uh kind of i'm going to say on a lower vibration in a sense and connected to our phones and all the things that are, are stressing us out more you know the garden's special because it's you're, you're getting not only the benefit of the movement and the sun and the soil health and earthing and being in the dirt and just grounding yourselves, but you're caring for another thing as well. And I think letting go of the ego, letting go of the judgment and just going with the flow is a piece of, uh, well, mental health and well being in, in general that we've really lost and it's part of our core nature. And so I think that that the garden, it doesn't ask much of you, but it's just enough to show you things and open doors for you and yeah. allow you, like you said, to be fluid and be in motion 
with the universe, but not, totally. uh, you know, it, it, not yeah, a, yeah. it doesn't it, even have to be esoteric. It can literally yeah. just be. It's so that. funny, right? Because like thinking about what we were chatting about at the very beginning um, of our chat here about how both of us had set up these little like greenhouse structures um, to, to try and control the variables that are being dealt to us. <laughs> and it's so funny to me because I like the, the more and more that I do that, like generally that is where things don't go according to plan. Um, and like, like, the same thing, right? yeah, like you, all of a sudden it's like, okay, I've got these seedlings that are like too big to be going or to be staying in here and too early to be going out into their forever homes. And like last year I like had like hundreds of tomatoes on the vines and it wasn't like super hot. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to like create a like greenhouse type structure around this like trellis cage that I have. And I did that. And sure enough, that cut off all the airflow and like late season blight hit like immediately on all of them and lost all the tomatoes. And it's like, well, that's what you get, Jordan, for trying a little bit too hard here to control everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You have to stay present and you have to be very careful uh, with what you change and what you don't. And, you know, my my husband has watched the majority of of my gardening journey and I think I started Mother's Day 10 years ago probably now um mm -hmm. you know I built a little box and uh you know my husband's like what's your secret because I've gotten to the point now it's become a bit of an obsession I'm gonna just say like I'm doing house plants now too and it's like people are throwing away a plant because they haven't been able to like keep it alive and I'm like no don't kill it and i'll like take it under my wing and we'll give it a yeah. name and we'll give it some fertilizer you know like homemade yeah. stuff and get it back up into good health and my husband's like what's your trick and i was like you need to pay attention you need to be yeah. aware. you need to look digger like look digger <laughs> it's like a as a <laughs> not on purpose but like look deeper into what's yeah. going on and like look at the plant, look at the surrounding, understand how they interact together. And I think it's just coming back to the present moment. And that's what we teach, you know, when we're coaching and when we're with our clients, you know, we really teach as holistic practitioners to be present, to be in our body, to understand what's going on, to be aware. In the garden, you really have to be aware. You have to be paying attention and uh, again, release that judgment. Totally. And I think- And it, yeah, you know, it it, it, it's really cool because as we slow down and start like rather than just looking at the garden from you know the window inside to then like on the back deck or on that path to then like six inches away from the leaf all of a sudden you start to see all these little critters and like yesterday I found like a whole bunch of eggs on the bottom of one of my kale leaves and it's like you know next thing you know, I could have been spending like a full hour just in that kale bed going through it and seeing what was going on. Um, and so it's like, it's really beautiful because this like, as you zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, you almost start to see more and more and more. Um, and, and yeah, it's once again into like that state of like, oh wow, like I'm fully like immersed in just this one kale leaf. You're trying to figure out like what these little eggs are and where they would have came from and what the environment around them would have been like to foster that. Um, well, and, and then so digging it, into like the natural pesticide side of things too is like, okay, how can I maybe co-plant to get rid of these little things? Is there something I can introduce that's going to be really good? You know, aphids, uh, my, my spirit animal is actually a ladybug. Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> so when I get aphids, I actually go and look for a ladybug to try and introduce into the garden um, naturally. Uh, and so there's, yeah. it, it, it is like an unfolding of information that you just kind yeah. of, you dig into a, a little corner and then you're like, okay, but then there's all this other like really fascinating information and you start to see, like you said, you start to see things that you would never have seen before, never paid attention to bo before. And I also witness it transferring over into other moments in my life when I'm outside of the garden. Yeah. You know, I'm starting to see things about nature and understand, you know, the, uh, you know, the connections that we have as beings, as plants, as, uh, 
well, co-creators on the, on the earth really, mm. but like things like, something my husband and I noticed the other day it's not garden related but you know how an ant you know cleans their antenna like this kind of rabbits do the same freaking thing you know so you start seeing the behaviors of these different animals or these different things that you probably wouldn't have realized if you weren't hanging out in the garden you know like my my girlfriend just moved from the city and she brought all her potted patio plants and uh she was like She has this now now huge kind of balcony almost where she's able to put, um, you know, more more things that don't have to be in plants. And so she was asking me for some lemon balm, some mint, and some herbs to protect from like mosquitoes and stuff. And uh, she was like digging in the pot, and she like pulled out one of the dead roots or whatever, and there was a whole bunch of wood bugs and ants. And she was like, "Oh, there's a lot of bugs in here." And then she's like, "Is that okay?" And I'm like yeah, you've just moved from a six floor balcony garden into real gardening essentially. And I was like, it's absolutely okay. It's decomposing. Like that's natural and it should be there. Um, so it's just like, it's fun to see somebody learn too. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful yeah. it's an art really. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's something that I, I'm always curious to like be asking our community, you know, like what's, what's the garden teaching you? Um, and, and how are you kind of a, yeah, a student to the garden, um, where, whereby, it, you know, it, it, it's lessons that can be applied, um, throughout other areas of life. And, and I know that for myself, this season, um, so much of it is, is just around like patience and, and being kind of okay, um, and, and content with where things are at in the garden. And that's for me, like a huge metaphor to the development and the creation of mind and soil where, um, you know, in, in my garden, you know, say I would want my tomato plants to be a little bit further along or the broccoli to be a little bit further along. Um, but it's just like, and, and that's where like, you can go down the path of like really trying to force that agenda, which is where things usually start going wrong for me as I've reflected and noticed in the garden. Um, or you can like continue to ensure that it's set up for success and is going to continue to develop as it's meant to. Um, and likewise with mind and soil, um, there's, you know, tons of moments where I'm like, we need to be further along. We need to be further along. We need to be further along. Um, when, when I then, then like zoom out for a second, I'm like, we're way further along than where I ever thought we would be at this point. Yeah. In the journey. Um, and if we've made it from kind of like a to here, then, you know, like if we continue to do the right things, the right behaviors, we're going to get from here to see, um, at the right time and at the right pace. And it's going to unfold as it's meant to. Um, so rather than like stressing about not being at point C, um, leaning more into being grateful for being where we are right now on the journey and continuing to do the things within our control to edge and move us towards point C. That's absolutely one of the most important things that anybody in a business could learn. Anybody in life could learn. Um, I like to look at both though. I think they're very much like when you start a business, it needs to be in alignment with who you are as a person or else you're going to just crumble and not want to do it and lose motivation. And that's why I love what you did. You, you found something that you're truly passionate about and very connected to, and you can grow into, I'm going to use the pun. (laughs) (laughs) It's hard not to, I know. Um, but you can literally grow into and, and learn from it. And that is what business and entrepreneurship to me should be. Like I come from a very administrative background as well. You know, like our, we have a platform for holistic nutritionists, you know, we have a tech, I have a techie background. I was in car sales, you know, and then I became this like hippy dippy holistic nutritionist who, you know, loves gardening and now is like fully immersed. And I actually, everything that you say is exactly how I feel about the garden and exactly how I actually take it into my business now is like the patience was one of the hardest things for me when I started out my business is like, well, I started three months ago. Why? Like, where are all the people like, come on, like, yeah. talk. like I need to make a month. I need to make money. But <clears throat> when you have this business that you're in alignment with, or 
a hobby or whatever you want to, you know, use and you integrate it into your business, your hobby, it ends up teaching you how to run your business because everything is in alignment and everything is working seamlessly and you start to learn from it. And that is what I really want to like, this is one of the reasons why I brought you on was because I, I found that you were doing something that truly meant the process of gardening and teaching others, I think means more to you than the success technically of your business. And yes, you've wrapped it into a business. Of course you want to be successful. That'd be, I'll be clear on that, but tell me if I'm wrong. You know, the success of your business is not reliant technically on your, on your mental health or your view of your business, because you're doing something that is fulfilling in a completely different manner. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's interesting as well, because we're in the midst of like a lot of just kind of like business planning and strategy planning for 2022 and, you know, kind of the, the direction that we want to go because, you know, six months ago, we hadn't even created Mind and Soil or, or we had just launched Mind and Soil. Um, and now we're like a little, th- little team of three of us um, and have, you know, over, we've done like over 1200 orders or something along those lines. Um, and so it's like, okay, there's, there's something that's here. And all that business planning, strategy planning that I had done in the past was just on my own with my own kind of like, like one um, intuition and, and, and vision. Um, but then two also with my own biases. Um, and so now it's really fun going through that as a little team of three and thinking through like, okay, like what is it that we want to create? And like, what are our measures of success? How are we defining kind of like shareholder value um, amongst ourselves? And um, it's like, it is unanimous across the board. That that's not a revenue figure for us. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a byproduct of building things the right way. Um, whereby like we absolutely are going to be a, like a for-profit and a very sharp business on that front. Um, but that all comes secondary to the impact that we want to be having, um, which we you know feel kind of complete clarity on being in the gardening space and the mental health benefits that come from it. So um, yeah, for, for me, it's, for me, it's kind of, uh, it's really exciting, you know, marrying impact and profitability as a business, um, mm-hmm. whereby I, I absolutely think that both of those can exist within one entity um, and is very much the, the path that we're going down. Yeah, exactly. And I, I mean, I, I recommend, I recommend it to the majority of entrepreneurs just so that they can, uh, and by I recommend it, I mean to have something in alignment that isn't revenue driven because I find that when you can work wholeheartedly in something, it reflects out to the world and people will find you that you're meant to be working with um, or collaborating with in some capacity. Like I found that the more connected that I am with well, the more the more fulfilled I feel in the work that I'm doing, the bigger impact it has on other people yeah. in a positive way. Um, and like you said, it doesn't have to be for me. It doesn't have to be financially rewarding in any way, shape, or form. I try and you know obviously live, but the the real reward is the feeling that you get by helping others experience the same thing that you're going through. Completely, and that's without a doubt been like the most magical part of the last six months like the the number of messages that we get from our community on the kind of like the the role and the impact that gardening has had on their life um it it's just so like so incredible and and the, the 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 timing of this conversation is actually really funny because um this evening uh, in Vancouver, we're having a little like community picnic where we've invited 10 individuals from our community and we're going to like host and cater a whole uh, little picnic event for each of them. 
and and each of them they have had you know some form of a very profound experience with gardening um, and leading to them being in a better headspace and so yeah we're gonna have this really cool kind of like little celebration of them and then our photographer um, that we work with that does all of our content she's going to be grabbing each of them for kind of like a 10 to 15 minute like kind of portrait photo shoot session of them working in the community garden um, that we're going to be able to share with them but then also um, share through our accounts so that other individuals who are grieving the loss of a grandma or that have been working through an eating disorder um, or who are firefighters and um, you know are going through the you know kind of like needing to decompress at 7 a.m after an overnight shift so that they can see that there are individuals within our community um, that have tapped into gardening to work through each of those areas and each of those three examples are literally the examples of three of the individuals that are going to be there this evening it's beautiful. Like, honestly, it's, it's so beautiful because like for me, you know, gardening started out, well, when I was a kid, I did some gardening uh, and, you know, I would get in and, you know, do the weeding for my mom or whatever because she, she would pay me. So why not? And then, like I said, I started, you know, with a, a little box a couple years ago and got into nutrition and um, I got into nutrition actually because I started getting eczema. <clears throat> and so I started digging into herbal remedies and stuff like that and uh, what I could do from a nutrition standpoint. And then the garden just kind of evolved, evolved, evolved. Uh, but my passion truly lies in the environment and nature mm -hmm. and working in the garden and stuff. And more recently, so about seven years ago, um, I was loosely diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And the garden was actually one of the only things that I could continue physically doing. Mm. Um, there was obviously some moments that it got harder, but this year, uh, well, last year, my, my illness got worse and it's just progressively gotten worse and worse and worse. And with a, a, it's turning out to look more like it's an autoimmune condition, but um, essentially the point of me bringing this up is that with a chronic illness, mental illness comes f like forefront before even managing the chronic pain, the fatigue that comes along with it. The mental health aspect of it is such a quintessential point. Um, and it, for me, it doesn't matter what the mental health issue is or the cause of it is. The garden has been like my safe space. It's like the place that I can go to and I can still feel like myself. Like I can still be the person that I want to be and reflect out. Maybe I physically can't do, you know, my rock climbing anymore, or I can't lift weights and I can't change the way the outside of my body feels, but I'm still me inside. So how do yeah. I stay true to me inside and be able to reflect the work that I'm doing mentally, the work that I'm doing on myself outwardly. And the garden has just allowed me to stay honestly moving because yeah. Uh, it's rewarding enough that it's energizing, right? And it's not, t I never feel like the garden's taking from me. Um, <clears throat> whereas I feel like other things like taking a shower, like that shit's hard, man. When you're in a full flare up of an autoimmune condition, you know, like, you know, I had to cancel because I literally couldn't concentrate, but the garden doesn't judge me on that. I can go into the garden and I can literally move like the snail that's on my plant and nothing's going to tell me anything different. And it's honestly, I don't think I would have gotten through the last two years without having a safe space where I could go and just decompress, like you said, or create something that reflected my true nature or made me feel whole. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's like adding a piece into your, into your being. Um, oh. But so yeah. and, I would love, I can't wait to listen to those stories uh, to be honest, because uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be moving. Do, do you have like a particular story that is like your favorite or, I mean, it's all the same. I can't, I don't like pinpointing it, but like. Yeah, I, I, I definitely like, I, I, I could, there, there, yeah, there, there's no way that I'd be able to pick a favorite because. I, They're all I could, valuable. I, I, yeah, and, and I would never want to, um, you know, place greater significance uh, or, or, or greater favoritism on um, one individual's journey and, and life story over another's. Um, what, 
you know, what, what I would say, not that it, like not favorite, but, but rather like what I love so much is that somehow we've managed to create a space where people who we've never interacted with before will feel comfortable to send us a message just sharing what gardening has meant to them just as you did right there um and that that's a safe space for them to to be able to do so um and that's where that's where like we again coming back to like what it is that we're building and creating like even even more so than customers and even more so than community what we're like beginning to gravitate towards is believers individuals who fully believe that like it doesn't matter what the triggering event for you is whether it was an autoimmune um, disease issue whether it was the losing of a family member whether it was a breakup on my instance an eating disorder like all are valid reasons for going through a hard time and finding yourself in a, a tough patch. And, and it's safe to be able to share that and to be um, your hurting and struggling self in the garden in and amongst us. Because um, like my, my favorite quote in the entire world is be kind. Everyone's fighting in a fight club you know nothing about because we don't talk about fight club. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. that, that I'd say that that's very much what we want to create with um, mind and soil and with the garden is just this this safe space for people to to be to be seen hurt and struggling. Sorry, that's cool. um, and and to be able to begin to heal on that journey. Yeah. Um, and that really resonates with me because, you know, back to your point when you said you just started sharing on Instagram, you're not, you're, you're sharing your hurt, but in a, in a, in a light of co-creation or art almost when you share the garden, you know, it's your process of clearing out those blockages of grief or whatever the grief is that you're grieving, you know, like with the autoimmune condition for me, um, you know, I'm grieving what I thought my life was going to be like. And it is grief. And I think we, we don't talk yeah. about grief. We don't talk about death. We don't talk about these taboo subjects. And people are scared to talk about their mental health because you're seen as quote unquote weak when you have a mental condition or you have something hard that you're working through. And if you, yeah. think, if you think about like, I always bring this back, sorry, when I, because I'm helping my mother-in-law learn how to garden. She's kind of my apprentice. Nice. Um, and she and I have the most wonderful conversations in the garden and it's like you can just drop everything that you brought in and just kind of reconnect with the with your with whoever it is and if you think back to thousands of years ago we would have been in a tribe we would have been in a community we would have been talking one-on-one -on -one, you know with the other people and working through our problems and we've become so distant from each other because of social media because of technology mm -hmm. and uh, the way we live in the world that we've lost this human connection and the ability to communicate with each other even when we are in a dark place because it's seen as being bad and it, it's not, we're in a human condition and we are all here, you know? Yeah, totally. um, and we're, and we're all going through something. Like yeah. When we, when we break it down um, to that kind of most fundamental level, like we are all very much in the same boat um, in that there's, you know, different things in each of our lives that are driving very similar emotional responses within us. Um, and I think the grief one is a really, really interesting one because, uh, you know, I think in, in a lot of ways, um, grief in, so, in some ways is seen as like a black and white thing where like, you know, it's, it's connected to the losing of someone physically in this world. Um, but there are so many other forms of death um, that, that um, transpire over the course of our life. It could be the death of a relationship, like the ending of that relationship. It could be the end of a career. It could be the end of living in a certain location. Um, it could be the end of pursuing a dream that one had um, and is no longer able to pursue. Um, and, and when there's so much 
emotional energy tied up in that, it's really, really hard to move on without having released it. Um, and that releasing process is grieving. Um, and one of like, the, uh, there is this kind of a mathematician who uses, uses the equation of suffering equals pain multiplied by resistance, mm. um, whereby, um, you know, we could be in pain about losing career, losing relationship, losing all these areas. And the more that we resist that happening, which is what I was doing back in 2013, I was like, this can't be like, there's got to be a way to get her back. I'm resisting what has occurred. It's that pain or that resistance multiplied by the pain that I was feeling that was driving all of the suffering um, versus as I allowed myself to move into the grieving process um, and as individuals allow themselves to move into a grieving process that is synonymous with the uh, resistance decreasing. We're beginning to accept, okay, this is what is happening and, and this is unfolding. Um, and I'm going to allow myself to like go through the full cycle of emotions on this um, because that is ultimately what, you know, that, that decrease in resistance will also drive the decrease in suffering, um, in, in turn creating, you know, ultimately happiness down the road. Yeah, and I've seen it, um, again, it's interesting because I'm connecting like garden, nutrition, yoga all together in this, but in terms of the resistance, for example, with chronic pain, you know, they've proven scientifically now, like the more you think about the pain, the more that you focus on it, the more that you are occupied by the pain, the worse your pain is going to get. It may not be there anymore, but now you're actually creating the neural pathways to create yeah. pain. It's gone. Yeah. The, the, the damage is done, but you have not yet released the, the attention that you're putting on it, that resistance to letting it go. And it's all about like letting it go and letting go of contraction. And it's so funny. This just keeps coming up in my life right now. <laughs> but uh, like this morning, you know, I was working, um, I do like this, our mix of French and English with um, somebody who works with my husband uh, and they're both uh, sports coaches and personal trainers. So of course they spend most of their day contracting, right? Like being resistant, you know, and like pushing against something and having to kind of have that contraction. Yeah. And now I'm trying to like teach him in our yoga sessions to let it go and like yeah. let it out and release it. And it's, it is very much, I think, that resistance against what's on the other side. Like if I work through this guilt or I work through this pain or I work through this tight muscle, what's going to be on the other side of that? And I think that scares a lot of people. And um, I think the garden, you know, like we're working. Whoop, oh, my God, I almost fell off my chair. That's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's uh, when you work in the garden, it just kind of allows you to let that go and work through it. And you can cry in the garden and you can, you know, totally. get angry at things and pull on shit and like, you know, let some anger out. But it's funny. It's like the death of, when you said like the death of a job too, my mother-in-law just retired, you know, and like, yeah. this is like something to occupy her mind and occupy her time, but in a positive way. And um I saw a lot of resistance when I share things about nutrition, for example. You know, when you compare a Coca-Cola, something that somebody's like super addicted to, to like, I don't know, a mint tea that, you know, that you made from the garden, for example. If you are like, Coca-Cola is bad for you because it's got lots of sugar and coloring and all that shit, nobody pays attention. You get nothing on Instagram. You get nothing on social media. Nobody's connected to that. And then I post literally this is a true thing like you said i posted uh, a, a mason jar full of mint tea that had cassis syrup that i made from the garden as well and so many people are like that's so amazing and they want to know more and it's yeah. like the minute that you talk about something that's like is negative about food or nutrition or, or anything there's so much resistance against it and i'm sure people are inundated with it all the time yeah. but the minute that you put a positive spin on it and you show them what you can make from mm. the garden or from what you've created the the resistance is gone and they want to know more and they're interested and I just think it's fascinating because it's like the minute you put something natural in front of them they're like oh that's fun you know yeah. like <laughs> I want to know more <laughs> yeah. So, yeah it's a, it's a it's a beautiful 
it's beautiful to share with everybody. So it's totally. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask you when people want to like get their hands dirty, like and start a garden or start something growing anything. Uh, what do you think like the three steps somebody could like take to kind of get started now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, Hmm. What would be three things that I would recommend to an individual hoping to get into gardening? The first one would be um, like just like to start super small, start small, uh, and and allow it to grow and and pull you into a larger space or more plants over time. Um, but one of the best ways to, you know, kind of begin resenting gardening is by biting off more than you can chew, where it starts to feel like a chore opposed to like an escape to your sanctuary. So um, if anybody has like only a windowsill or only a patio, like I view that as a huge blessing at the beginning of the gardening journey because you're not forced um, into a position of like, how do I fill up this whole backyard with stuff? Um, so starting small would be the the first thing. And then second piece would be to, uh, you know, like to, to, to be growing something that you're fascinated by. Um, so if you're really intrigued by growing an avocado plant, then like play around with that, right? Like watch a couple of YouTube videos on how to grow an avocado um, from, you know, a, a, from an avocado seed that you got at the store. Um, make sure that those, yeah, those first plants that you start growing um, are ones that you're like, that you're intrigued by, that you're curious about, that you're fascinated by, um, because that then begins to capture our mind and we're more invested mentally in that than if it was just, you know, something that we were handed at the, you know, the, the garden center or from somebody else as a gift, et cetera. Um, and I'd say, you know, the, the third part would be like, it's kind of down that vein of like, don't place any expectations on like the yield or what comes from it, but almost more so like observe how you feel when you get to spend time in your garden. Um, and if you don't have expectations on what comes from it, then it's okay if it fails. Um, but just observe, like, did I enjoy that, you know, 20 to 30 minutes that I got to, um, be potting things into a container? Did I enjoy that 30 minutes that I got to spend pruning away, um, add a couple of things here and there? Did I enjoy the 15 minutes that I spent just weeding out a couple of weeds in that area? Um, and if the answer, like, as you go through that is like, yeah, that was, that was nice. That was relaxing. Um, well then just as you continue to, um, apply more time and more energy over multiple years, that's where the harvest, the yield, the bounty of vegetables and fruits and flowers and herbs will continue to grow as well. Um, but that's a byproduct um, of ultimately focusing on the, the three pieces before that. Yeah, for sure. And I think those are great recommendations. And I think you make a very, very solid point when you say, make sure you're interested in what it is that you're doing. And it, uh, again you know it'll it'll grow with you and you'll you'll grow into it I guess in, in a sense like I said I started with a tiny box you know we all kind of start that way and now I have this massive plot and I've even started you know integrating plants into the house by propagating them and mm -hmm. learning how to and it it's <clears throat> I think once you get into it you'll you'll just start diving it down other rabbit holes but really do start with something that is going to keep that attention because you want to maintain it as a long-term practice not as a not as a yeah and it mean it, it it requires you to maintain it as a long-term practice I think is the yeah. other thing um beautiful so I want to just say um I think the next question I want to ask you is like what's the best way for people to work with you I know you guys have the worm casting uh so it, like maybe you can explain that better you have worm castings for sale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when we think about an individual trying to get into gardening or even for, you know, somebody that has been gardening a little bit, but really wants to like take it to that next level. And again, what we're trying to do is help people feel the restorative side of gardening. And what usually 
occurs is that anytime that you're trying something new for the first time or you're earlier on with it, um, it's not actually that relaxing and calming because you're stressed. You're like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I don't know if I'm doing this wrong. Was that the right thing to do? Was this the right thing to do? You're kind of asking yourself all of these questions throughout and it's over time as you've gone through experience um, that you start to feel more comfortable, more confident with it. Um, and therefore you're not worried about any of those pieces. You're just resting and recharging, feeling better from a headspace perspective. And so for us at Mind and Soil, the question becomes, how do we reduce that learning curve so that individuals aren't feeling like, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? Was that the right soil to be using? And did I mix things up the right way? And so we aim to reduce that learning curve through providing gardeners with the products that they would need to be set up for success in their garden. And um, with the online education, so that if you're thinking through, okay, like how do I start seeds for the very first time, rather than just like throwing a couple of seeds into some soil and then like letting them set by the windowsill, we literally are able to take you like, these are the exact materials that you're going to need. And this is the method that we're going to follow for the next 21 days. And if you do those two things, use these materials and follow this method, like a hundred percent guarantee you will have seeds starting and growing really, really, really well. So for us, um, you know, for anybody that, you know, would be wanting to get their hands dirty, um, like biggest recommendation would probably be like head over onto our website, um, dive into our happy hours, the recordings that are on there. Uh, I'm going to share with you something that we're working on right now that isn't live on the website just yet. But those happy hours will start helping you feel like, again, like you've got more of the answers for getting into gardening. And then the worm casting soils are 444 superfood, the seed cells, the grow bags. Those are all the things that an individual would need to be using in the garden to be set up for success. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm fully confident um, that if an individual is, you know, looking to get into gardening, that, um, that we'd be able to help them kind of get into it and experience it. Yeah. And I've, <clears throat> I've watched one of your happy hours and I knew most of what you said, but they are very, very, very packed full of information. And I think it's a great resource on, you know, it's one thing to kind of watch a YouTube video and think that you're watching the right thing that's going to help you the most. But other than, I mean, as an administrative person, I love methods. I think that a method, if you're going to learn a method, method, like you are essentially teaching people as if they're sitting in your garden. And I think that that's really powerful. And with the internet and your background in marketing and stuff like that, I think it's a great way of introducing it to anybody and mm -hmm. an important uh, a piece, piece to the puzzle um, mm -hmm. that we're missing right now in terms of the state of the world, let's just say. Um, <laughs> but um, so share with us what you're working on then that's not up on the website. I'd love to hear more as well. Yeah, totally. So, um, and it, you know, it's directly in line with those, those two pieces that I mentioned in terms of, you know, we believe that um, for individuals to experience those mental health benefits of gardening, we need to get them through the learning curve so they feel comfortable, feel confident. And so what we've done this year has just been like happy hours, which is like a one hour Zoom session um, where we get a couple hundred people on a call and um, we go over a topic. And so what we're building out for next season that we're in the middle of doing all the recording on um, and development on is essentially like a full online academy. Um, so that if anybody like, and, and it will go like step by step. So like, if you're wanting to start from seeds, how to go about starting those seeds. And then when they are starting to grow, what should you be doing to prep your soils so that they're ready to move into their kind of forever home, um, in a very, very fertile environment for them. And then as we get ready to move them out there, how do we go about hardening those seedlings off? And so the, the, the hope and the intention with this academy that we're building out is that an individual will be able to go in there um, and go through, like, basically be, be handheld through the entire gardening season with us, with the resources that are in there, and go through that at the pace that is right for them. 
Um, so yeah, it's, I, I'm very excited to get that all out there and, and live um, because it's going to be, um, the, the academy itself is going to be like very comprehensive where again, like I really want it to feel like individuals or feel for individuals like we're there holding their hand. Um, and then that will of course be able to be like broken down into small, more like bite-sized pieces that we share with people um, on social through our email, et cetera. Yeah, for sure. I think it's brilliant. And I think that's the way like the, the, I mean, that's the way that business is going. So we can talk about that too, is like, you know, business is moving to be online, you know, you got to adapt and a lot of it is going to be online learning and online learning platforms. I mean, that's really what we specialize in on the hub too, on the business side is hand holding somebody through a method in order to get them to arrive at a point where they feel comfortable to then go forward with. And um, I think any coach, any entrepreneur, anybody can do this. You create a method and that's how you sell. Like that's, that, that's what business is. Um, so I'm excited to see that come, come out. And I, I really want you to keep me posted on that Academy because I think our listeners, <clears throat> many of them would be very interested in it for sure. Um, because it's a, it's something that again, in eco nutrition, when I was teaching it, they learn a lot of the, the reasons why we should be eating well. Uh, you know, why you don't want to buy from a castle, why you don't want to buy, um, you know, just from the, the grocery store and what the health benefits or negatives are in that. Um, they never get, and well, until I started teaching, you know, they never get taken into a garden. So, you know, like going and seeing how these things actually function and using it as a practical tool doesn't really almost connect when you're working as a holistic nutritionist because you've never actually stepped foot into that garden that we told you to be eating from. Mm. So it, it's again, kind of this funny disconnection in terms of, and it was honestly the students like favorite part of the entire class was actually going to see how, <laughs> how these things are grown and what that actually means for the health of the soil and that our health as well, ultimately. Um, so just share with us quickly, we'll leave off on where people can find you on social media and uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So the, yeah, like we're, we're definitely very active on Instagram. Um, that's at mind and soil, M I N D A N D S O I L. And then our website, mindandsoil.com. And then, like I mentioned, um, you know, for next year, 2022, I would imagine, excuse me, that you'll see more of us probably on, on YouTube as well. But um, for the time being, those would be the two areas. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that uh, wonderful little chat with me. Um, I think people are going to be People are going to be interested because everybody loves something about gardening. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah. So thank you. Totally, yeah, yeah, and, and like we'd be more than happy at any time to do a happy hour for um, you and for the community on your end, and um, you know, just kind of like, yeah, get get everybody together, go through some you know pieces of getting into gardening, and then more than anything, like just answering a whole bunch of questions to help people feel more comfortable, more confident. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I can find some people to rally together to do a, a oh. chat like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Anyways, I'll stop recording, but thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah, we, uh, it's, uh,